Hey guys, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to host multiple WordPress websites on a single Nginx server. In other words, by the end of this video, you'll learn everything you need to know about how to have as many WordPress websites as you want on a single hosting plan, for example. So if that's something that you're interested in, let's take a look. I'll walk you through every step of the way. So right here in this Chrome web browser, I have site two at site2.xyz, it's a WordPress website. And I have site1 pretty close, kind of identical at site1.xyz. So these are the two WordPress websites. As far as you know, they could be hosted on two different hosting plans, but just to prove that's not the case, I'm gonna go ahead and ping site1.xyz. That's just gonna come back with its IP address, so take note of that. And now I'm gonna ping site Two dot xyz and it has the exact same IP address as site one. So that tells me that they're hosted on the same exact web server. How did I do that? Let's find out. Let's SSH into that IP address, which is where the hosting plan that I have with Linode is right now. And that'll take just a second or two here. And now we are logged into that server. So the first thing I wanna show you guys is in var www. So in addition to the default HTML directory, we have our web directory for site one and our web directory for site two. So let's just take a peek in site one. We have a WordPress directory and in there you have all your basic WordPress installation files. Same thing holds true. Let's just change this from site one to site two. You'll see the exact same thing. Um, everything's pretty much the same except for the WordPress configuration file. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. The other thing I wanna show you is an ETC Nginx because this tutorial is about Nginx web servers, how to host multiple websites on them, specifically WordPress. This actually holds true for non-WordPress websites too, but um, let's go into the sites available directory. And you'll see we have two configuration files in addition to the default. We have site one and site two. So let's take a look at site1.xyz.conf. And you'll see here that, you know, this, this is a very basic, uh, non-secure, non-optimized configuration file for Nginx, but it's here to serve the purpose of just demonstrating how this can be done. So we have the server name, which is giving you the domain name of the website, site one and the www version. Remember the file directory that we just looked at in var www? We have var www site one.xyz and the WordPress directory. So that's where all those files are being served out of. This location block just tells um, the web server to try and show what's at this directory. And if it ends in a .php, like a PHP file, it's gonna to try to execute it with this handler, which we specifically called site one PHP handler. That's a little bit complicated. Just know that pretty much any instance of site one that you see in this file is going to be changed to site two in the site2.xyz.conf file. So here's that file and you'll see it looks pretty much the same except site one has been changed to site two. Obviously that's the case because we are serving site two out of var www site two. This is kind of like the punchline to this whole video, this root slash var slash www slash site two. Okay, so if that's a case, I mean, you can take it for granted, take it for what it is, add another website, you know, you know everything you need to know at this point, but I figured if you're interested, I'll walk you through setting up site3.xyz just so you can go through the ropes and see how it's all done in real time. So the first thing to do to add, the first thing we wanna to do to add another WordPress website to this specific server is to go to the var www directory and let's make a new directory called site3.xyz. Okay, so let's go into that directory and let's pull down the latest version of WordPress. So that we can do with wget https colon slash slash wordpress dot wordpress with two s's dot org um, what is it wordpress org slash latest dot tar dot gz i think that's it yeah there we go so we have the zipped up file of the wordpress installation files um, let's untar this with where am i at 
tar dot or tar dash x xzvf and then the name of the file. So that's going to just unpack everything. We'll remove that tar file and just take a peek at the WordPress directory here. So that's what that looks like. Now, the next thing we want to do is to set up the server for the WordPress installation. We're going to be using a MySQL server. So go ahead and log into MySQL. If you're on a VPS like I am with Linode, um, you can, and you're, if you're root, you can just type in MySQL. Otherwise, you have to provide the credentials. So here, um, instead of typing everything out, I'm just going to copy and paste it to save some time so you don't have to watch me. If you want to copy and paste as well, I'll have a blog post linked below with all the code snippets from this tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a database going to name the database WP underscore site three. You can name it whatever you want. And we're going to do the default character set UTF-8 collate UTF-8 underscore Unicode underscore CI. Okay, so that created that database. The next thing we want to do is to make a user and give it some privileges. So the user is going to be, well, let's just go through it left to right. So we're going to grant all all privileges on this database, all tables, which is the star, to the user named user underscore site three at localhost identified by password. Not secure, but just for the demonstration. We'll do that and then we'll flush privileges. How do you spell privilege? P R I V I L E G E S. Okay. So and we can exit out of that. So basically what I did was we created a database and we added a user. Now with that information, let's open up, well actually we have to do one more thing. Um, by default, there's this file called, where is it, WP config sample. So we want to make a copy of that. So copy the configuration sample file and we're just gonna call it wp-config.php. So let's edit that. And if you don't know how to use Vim, uh, I'll have a video for you about how to use Vim. Very basic, just a couple commands you need to know. And we'll come down here and replace some of these values with the values that we just created. So the database name is WP underscore site three. The user, the database user is user underscore, what did I call him, site three. And the password is just password. Everything else can be the same as far as the host, the character set, and collate. Um, let's get rid of the only other thing in here we want to get rid of is these salts. I, that's that's the name of them. Um, I'm going to copy this address, which is in the configuration file, visit it in a web browser copy the resulting values, come back into your terminal window, and right where you left off, go ahead and paste those values in. I'm not going to explain this. If you need to read into it, you can uh, you can Google it. It's just something for security. Okay, so that's it for the WordPress configuration file. Let's go into the Nginx directory and do some configuration there, which is actually going to be pretty easy in this case because um, we already have the configuration files stubbed out pretty much. So go into the sites available directory and we're going to make a copy. Let's make a copy of site two and name it site. We'll name it site3.xyz.conf. We'll edit that file and we're just going to do a find and replace, which you can do by going into command mode, which is colon and type in uh, percent s for search site two anytime we see site two let's replace it with site three hit enter and that made four substitutions on four lines so just to review again we have our server which is at this domain name site three dot xyz also at the www version we have the root of our wordpress installation at this directory and all of our basic um, location blocks down here. So go ahead and save that file. And the next thing I'm going to do, since um, just real quick, if you don't know about the layout of Nginx, you have 
bunch of configuration files in the site's available directory, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're live and accessible. In order to um, make use of them, you wanna put them in the site's enabled directory. So you can do that with a sim link. And we can do that uh, with sudo link-s or sudo ln-s. Uh, we're gonna give it the full path. So etc nginx sites available. We're gonna say site3.xyz.conf. Did I not put in, let me, one sec. I think I, think I see an error. So sites available. Mm, yep. Um, for some reason, I didn't add an F on here, so I'm just gonna glad I caught that. So we're gonna say uh, rename this from site3.xyz.con to that with an F. So now we have just a review: site1.com, site2, and site3. Okay. Let's go back and try that sim link again. I think for sake of time, your guys' time, uh, I'm gonna copy and paste this. So. Basically what we're doing here is sim linking the file site3.xyz.conf in the sites available directory and putting it into the sites enabled directory. So when we do that, we can just check it out that it's actually existing now in this sites enabled directory. There it is. And um, just to make sure we don't have any er errors, let's do nginx-t for test and Site one day, like, no, 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 no. Okay, so it says the status is okay. Uh, that's, I think our find and replace might not have worked. So let's go into sites available and site3.xyz.conf. Yeah, for some reason, um, glad I caught this one too. This site one, the www.site1.xyz never got changed to site three. So we'll save that. We'll retest our configuration files. Oh, and I must have did the same thing on uh, site two. This was prior, so not your guys' fault. Real quick, change that. Sorry for wasting your time. Okay, so if we do the test, we should see no errors. We don't, syntax is okay, test is successful. Last thing I'm gonna do is to restart the server. Actually, you know what, let's do this first. Let's try to visit site3.xyz. And you'll see that it's taking us to site one, which is um, kind of the expected behavior. Um, just also so you know, before we actually restart the Nginx server, I do have, I've like prior to this whole tutorial, I've already pointed my DNS records to the IP address that we're at. So that should have propagated by now. So let's go ahead and restart this Nginx server. So that's SYST system CTL restart Nginx. Okay, so no errors, that's good. Let's try to reload site three and hopefully we'll see site three served up. Oh, and yeah, th this makes sense because this is a fresh installation of WordPress. So this is, because um, we just pulled it down from the, 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 the internet. This is the setup for WordPress, the installation. So we'll give it username, admin, pass, word, just pass, um, Tony at TonyTeaches.tech. If you have any questions, you can email me there in the comments below on my website, whatever you feel is easiest for you. Okay, we'll log in, admin, pass, login. And here's site three. We're serving it out of site3.xyz. We can go to that website, hello world. And uh, what I did just to make everything consistent was I edit the default sample post, hello world. Welcome to site, I think I did capital site three. Did I do an exclamation? Yeah. Exclamation, update, bam, preview. Actually we can go to live site. There you go. So we have Site three from site3.xyz, site two, site one, all on the same, <clears throat> all on the same server, all on the same hosting plan. It's not that hard, it's pretty easy. If you have any questions, like I said, let me know in the comments below. There is a more in-depth tutorial on my website, tonyteaches.tech. Guys, please give it a thumbs up. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing to this channel for more videos like this. I'm here to help you. 
Um, thank you. Have a good one.